What is going on guys? Welcome back, MG Marine Tech here. Today we are gonna be covering a topic that I've wanted to cover for some time now, comparing the Echomap UHD series units to the Echomap Ultra series units. Now with the UHD series units, we're talking about your seven inch unit and your nine inch units. And the Ultra units, you're talking about your 10 inch units and your 12 inch units. There has been a lot of buzz in the community as of late. And I think this buzz is sparked off of some of Cabela's and Bass Pro's Black Friday sales. Now, if you guys didn't know right now, Bass Pro and Cabela's are putting the 93 UHDs with transducer on sale for uh, $699, and then the 106s are on sale with a transducer for $1,000. So you are talking about a $300 price difference between two vastly different units. And a lot of people are kind of confused on if that $300 is worth a one inch bigger screen. Well, I am here to tell you that there is a lot more to the story than a physical dimension on your screen size, and that is exactly where we're gonna be covering today. We are gonna be covering not only the physical differences between these two units, but also the specifications between these two units, and that is where the key points are, is the difference in specs in these units. So, for all purposes of today's video, for at least the physical differences between the two units, we are gonna be using a couple of units that I own, and that is a 93 plus and a 126 ultra. I know what you guys are saying in that you are going to want to compare a 93 UHD to a 106 ultra and not the 126 ultra compared to a 93 plus. Well, what I'm gonna tell you is that a 126 ultra and a 106 ultra specs wise are exactly the same. It's only the physical screen size that is different. And the same goes for a 93 UHD to a 93 plus. Uh, those two units are exactly the same on the outside. It's only what's on the inside and the ability of the 93 UHD to run UHD transducers where the plus is not really up to the task of running the UHD transducers properly. Just keep that in mind. Uh, it is only a physical dimension on the 106 that is gonna be different compared to my 126 that we're gonna be using in today's video. So without further ado, let's dive into the physical differences between a 93 UHD and a 126 Ultra. The first thing you're gonna notice off the bat is that a 126 is obviously a lot larger than a 93. I put on each of these screens are a business card. So your standard business card size, just to kind of give you guys a size reference between the two. Now. Again, this is a 126, so this is a 12 inch screen, and this is a 93, so this is a nine inch screen. Obviously, a 106 is going to be smaller than this, so I kind of just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a size comparison there, uh, and it's obviously gonna be kind of in the middle of these two. Now, there are more differences on the physical side of things, and that comes to your SD cards. So with your SD cards on the Ultra Series units, you get two slots so you have a slot for your active captain card and you also have a slot for a maps card on the plus and uhd units you only have one sd card slot not a big deal especially when you have more than one unit networked and that is also one of the beautiful things between these two units is that they will still network other than the actual physical size dimension difference between these two units everything else on the outside is exactly the same you know the same button layout the same four buttons here as your 93 UHD. Now again, both of these are Echo Map family units, so they share the same exact firmware. They're both gonna operate exactly the same, uh, so the user the interface is exactly the same. If you're used to one of these units, you're gonna know this one already. So moving on to the bail mounts. Now both of these units will utilize a bail mounting system where you have this device here that will be permanently affixed to your boat or ice shuttle, whatever it may be. And then the head unit or the screen gets snapped into, into that actual bail mount. So this would be your 93 UHD and this is the 93 UHD bail mount. Again, fixed to whatever you want it to be attached to. And then you simply put it in the screen, put the screen in and pop it in place. Now, that's all good and dandy. The screen is securely in there. Some people have difficulties with this, with this unit popping out, falling out in extremely rough conditions. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, these pop out only when these units aren't securely fastened in there. And you actually have to 
fight pretty good sometimes to get them out. And this is a well seasoned unit. I've used this one a lot, but again, it is plastic and it is, you know, you're flexing this unit all the time where the uh, ultra unit is a little bit more robust and we'll cover that one right now. Moving on to the ultra cradle, a couple of differences right off the bat is that this cradle has a steel base and its locking mechanism is a little bit different. So I'm gonna show you guys the differences in that one here. Uh, to lock these in place, you have to uh, set this little groove right here into this groove down here, like so. And it's a little bit hard with it not being, not being affixed to anything. And then you have this little guy right here, which gets flipped up, the screen gets plugged in, and then locked into place. And it's hard to see in here, but there's actually little teeth right here. These guys right here that get pushed in, and this thing is solid in here. The screen's not really gonna go anywhere. So that's one of the other added benefits of the Ultra units over the 93 UHD units. Moving on to the backs of the bail mounts, you're gonna notice right off the bat there are several differences between these two. This is the Ultra unit, this is the UHD unit, but let's kind of go through some of these ports on the back here. Now, obviously we both have power ports. Uh, this right here is an NMA2000. You've got your NMA2000 right here, 12 pin transducer, 12 pin transducer, a single networking port right here. And then you'll notice two networking ports on here. That is a very, very key uh, thing to keep in mind. We'll cover that here in a second. And then also on here, you see an LVS uh, transducer port. Now this transducer port is to run live scope with no black box. Now, there is a key factor I have to point out right here is that it is not this style of live scope. Uh, this is the LVS 32 transducer. That requires a black box no matter what series you have. This is for an LVS 12 series live scope. There is a couple of differences in those two and I'm not gonna cover that right now. Going back to the networking ports. The great thing about these is if you have, uh, if you're trying to network you know, more than one device, um, you do not have to buy additional hardware. If you have two screens and live scope, to uh, network all that, you're going to need a network expander or a GMS-10, and you're looking at about 230 bucks there just for the GMS-10 Garmin network expander. Now, with this series unit, if you have, say, one Ultra and one UHD series unit and live scope, you can then network all of this together with just a couple of cords. As there you have it, there are the actual physical differences between a UHD unit and a Ultra unit. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is covering the actual technical uh, differences, the actual specs, you know, the stuff behind the scenes that you can't see on the outside. And this is where the real performance gain comes from, is the stuff that you can't see. So let's dive into that. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about with technical specs is the processor. Now the only downside is, is that I am not able to find anything in writing that states just how much faster the Ultra Unit processor is than the UHD processor. I can tell you firsthand that it is faster just by playing with the screens side by side. The Ultras overall, the screen re refresh rate is much quicker. Uh, hitting the buttons, things happen quicker. Uh, everything in general happens quicker on the Ultras because of the faster processor. Now, that faster processor also allows for a much more crisp picture when it comes to everything, even including your maps, um, your sonars, side imaging, down imaging, all that stuff. So that is a huge thing for me is the picture quality. So that faster processor really does help me out quite a bit. Next thing we're gonna move on to is the actual screen size and resolution. This is where the fun happens. Here is what I'm excited to talk about. This is where guys that are really concerned about your side imaging quality and your down imaging quality, this is where you want to spend the extra money in going with the Ultra. It's not just a one inch bigger screen from a 93 UHD to a 106 Ultra unit. It is the also added resolution. So we're gonna dive into these numbers here right now. Well, let's talk about screen size and the importance of screen size with side imaging. So with the GT56 transducer, 
I like to scan 100 foot on each side of the boat, 100 foot on my right side of my boat and 100 foot on my left side of my boat that I'm scanning. Overall, 200 foot. Now, if I'm trying to take 200 foot of information and cram it onto a nine inch screen, everything gets very, very small. So I take that same 200 foot and cram it onto a 12 inch screen, a bigger screen, things are gonna be just a little bit bigger, easier to pick out. Now we take a resolution into that factor. You have a smaller resolution. Things are gonna be a little bit fuzzy. Everything is not gonna have as many pixels dedicated to specific items on that screen. Now you take a higher resolution, you're gonna have more pixels dedicated to each individual item on that screen, making them more clear so you can understand better what you are seeing on your screen. So now let's go over the numbers. And again, hang on with me because there's some pretty cool stuff right here. Now let's talk about the total screen size or the square inch of the screen. So starting with the nine inch screen, you have a 37.44 square inch screen. The 10 inch screens of the ultras, you have a 44.9 inch screen and your 12 inch ultra, you have a 65.92 square inch screen. Now going on to the resolution of these two, we have UHD units having a 400 by 800 pixel count and the ultra units, both the 10 and the 12 inch ultra units have a 1280 by 800 pixel count screen. Now we take these two resolutions and we can actually figure out how many pixels are on your screen with very simple math. You just take the resolution, the 400 by 800, and you actually do the math. So 400 times 800 gives you 320,000. So on the seven inch and the nine inch UHD units, you have 320,000 pixels on that screen. Now, when you jump over to the ultras and do the math, you have 1,024,000 pixels on that screen. So that is 3.2 times the amount of pixels on an ultra screen as compared to a UHD screen. And what that means is that each uh, item on your screen is gonna have more pixels dedicated to it, giving it a uh, much cleaner, more crisp detail, allowing you to better define what you are seeing. And that's all we wanna do with side imaging and down imaging is see what is to the side of us and beneath us. And I'm gonna go one step further and prove that point. So we have our total pixel count for each screen. Now we can take that total pixel count and divide it by the total square inches of that screen, which will give us pixels per inch. For the math on a UHD unit, we're gonna do the nine inch unit here. Uh, that is 320,000 pixels on the entire screen divided by its screen size, that gives you 8,547 pixels per inch. Not bad, right? Now let's jump up to a 10 inch ultra. Again, it has 1,024,000 pixels divided by its 45.9 square inch screen, and that's gonna give you 22,309 pixels per screen. So substantially more pixels per screen. Now if we jump up to a 12 inch ultra, doing the math again, that gives you 15,533. Now you'll notice that the pixels per square inch went down on that one. And the reason being is we went with a larger screen. So it's got a larger uh, complete square surface area and we had the same resolution. So the same amount of pixels on the screen. What does this mean? Well, it means that the 10 inch screen in theory has the sharpest picture out of all three of these units that we just did. I am still going to give the ultra 12 inch the win uh, when it comes to side imaging purely for the fact of that screen size. It has enough resolution for its screen size for things to still be very detailed. Next thing we're gonna be moving on to is amp draw and power output. This is more so important for guys that are taking these units ice fishing. They're kind of trying to calculate how much power, how big of a battery they're gonna need. What I did here is I'm just gonna be comparing the seven inch units to the ultra units because they rated both the 10 and the 12 inch ultra units uh, the same power consumption. So. Your nine inch UHD unit at 12 volts is gonna draw 1.5 amps. Now that is the max amount it's gonna draw at that voltage, whereas your ultra is gonna be drawing a little bit more. Remember, bigger screen, faster processor, all that stuff takes a little bit more power, and they rate that at 2.16 amps that it's gonna be drawing, and again, that is 12 volts. Now, here's a fun thing about voltage. When you up the voltage, your amp draw goes down. So at 13.8 volts, they rate the UHD units, the nine inch UHD unit at 1.3 amps that it's going to be drawing. And the ultras, they rate at 1.88 amps. So you're talking about half an amp difference in most cases, so not huge. The next thing I wanna cover is the power output, also known as the transmitter power. Now, on your Echomap UHD units, your seven and your nine, you have a 500 watt RMS and a 4,000 watt peak to peak. 
Now the peak to peak on both units is gonna be the same, but when you jump up to an ultra series unit, you have 600 watts RMS. Now this RMS rating is the amount of power that it can apply to the transducer continuously. Well, what does this mean? This means that uh, the ultra units can take better advantage of higher power transducers, such as your GT51, some of your Airmar stuff. And this is more uh, dialed in around guys that fish offshore in deeper water because this more power that it can apply to the transducer allows you to better penetrate uh, deeper water as well as get better returns in that deeper water. So that's kind of a general overview there. Now with this transmitter power, there is one question that I have and the way I make sense of it in my brain, um, I'll kind of walk through it with you guys here real quick, but this transmitter power or the RMS number is the amount of power it can apply continuously to the transducer. Well, the transducers have different ratings on them depending on the element inside the transducer. Now, the transducers we use most of the time are three-in-one transducers, so they have a side imaging part, a down imaging part, and a 2D part. Now, all three of these are rated differently, so we use a GT56, for example. The traditional part of that transducer is rated at 350 watts. Now, I would assume that it's only 350 watts when the transducer is being pushed all the way um, as far as gain. So when you have your gain turned up all the way, that's the amount of power that's being put into the water. I would assume it can it uses that much power when it's turned all the way up. Now, if you have that turned all the way up using 350 watts, and then you have your clear view and your side view on that transducer, which is rated at 500 watts, turned all the way up, you're obviously gonna be at a deficit because the 350 watts of the traditional and the 500 watts of the side view and the clear view, it means there's an 850 watt demand, but the output of an ultra is 600 and the output of a UHD unit is 500. So again, I would assume that that is when you are pushing those types of sonars to their limit. That's how much they can draw. So obviously it's gonna have to pull power from somewhere to get that there and potentially could be um, a way to start tuning in your side imaging, your down imaging is, you know, turn your 2D gain all the way down, gives you a little bit more power to play with on your um, side imaging and down imaging. I don't know if that's how that works, but maybe something we can test out in the future. And last but not least, we are gonna be talking about the GPS signal. With your UHD units, you are talking about a five hertz refresh rate. And your ultra unit, we are talking about a 10 hertz refresh rate. So it has a two times faster GPS signal on a ultra unit over the UHD unit, meaning your position uh, that your boat icon is on your map is in theory gonna be more accurate because the refresh rate is two times faster. There you have it. That is my very long-winded explanation of the differences between a ultra series unit and your UHD series unit. Now, if I didn't make it clear enough already, I have a very favorite and that is the ultra series units, hands down uh, a better unit all the way around, but I'm gonna give you my top three favorite things. Number one, screen size. I'm a side imaging guy, so the bigger screen I can get, the better. Side imaging is my favorite tool when I'm out on the water. Second to that is the screen resolution. Now again, screen resolution, higher screen resolution is gonna make things on your screen that much more crisp. And number three is the processing power. And that also adds into the side of green side of things. Not only does it make everything else on the unit faster, but it's also gonna give you a better, uh, you know, overall better side imaging picture, as well as countless other things. But as always, if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, please hit it because it really does help me out, helps push my videos out, gets this information out to other people. As well, if you have any other comments, questions, or concerns, even content that you guys wanna see in the future, have me cover, please drop a comment down below, find me on Facebook. As always, stay tuned for more tips and tricks on MG Marine Tech.